Chapter 26 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 26 Walking, ever walking, the braves arrived at the borders of a lake which was in the plateau land. The Christian suddenly stopped and turned his face towards the sea. The sadness left his heart and rose to his forehead. My brother's foot has taken root in the land of love, said the chief. Let him remain. Pochi will quickly return. Pochi's brother will accompany him. He has said it, and his word is like the arrow of Pochi's bow. When it whistles, it has already pierced the mark. Does my brother then wish that Irasema should accompany him to the banks of the Acaraú? We go to fight her brothers. The taba of the Pichiguaras would only be to her a scene of pain and sadness. The daughter of the Tabajaras should remain. What then does Quachabo wait? Pochi's brother is afflicted, because the daughter of the Tabajaras may be sad, and abandon the wigwam without awaiting his return. Before departing, he would wish to soothe the spirit of the wife. Pochi took thought. The tears of woman soften the warrior's heart as the morning dew softens the earth. My brother's wise, the husband must go without seeing Irasema. The Christian advanced. Pochi bid him stop. From the aljava which Irasema had adorned with black and red feathers and had placed on her husband's shoulders, he selected an arrow. The Pichiguara drew the bow. The fleet arrow pierced a guayamu, which was running on the banks of the lake, and stopped only where the feathers would not allow it to enter farther. The warrior thrust the arrow into the ground with the prey transfixed, and turned towards Quachiabo. My brother may now set out contentedly. Irasema will follow his trail. Arriving here, she will see his arrow, and obey his will. Marching smiled and breaking a branch of the maracujá, the flower of remembrance, he twined it round the arrow, and advanced, followed by Pochi. Soon the two warriors disappeared amongst the trees. The heat of the sun had already dried their footsteps on the banks of the lake. Irasema became uneasy, and followed her husband's trail as far as the tableland. Gentle shades already mottled the prairies, when she reached the brink of the lake. Her eyes detected the arrow of her husband thrust into the ground, and the pierced Goyamun with the broken branch, and they filled with tears. He commands Irasema to go backwards like the Goyamun, and to keep his remembrance like the Maracujá, which retains its flower until death. The daughter of the Tabajaras slowly retraced her steps backwards, without turning her body, and never taking her eye off the arrow of her warrior, till she reached the cabin. Here she sat down on the threshold, and bent her forehead on her knees, till sleep soothed the pain in her breast. Hardly had the day broken, when she directed her hasty steps to the lake, and arrived at its bank. The arrow was still there, as it had been the evening before, then he had not returned. From this time till the bath hour, instead of seeking the lake of beauty, where hitherto she had bathed with such pleasure, she came to that which had seen her husband abandon her. She would sit down close to the arrow until night came, and then seek the cabin. She would set out in early morning as hurriedly as she would return slowly in the evening. The same warriors who had seen her so joyous in the waters of Porangaba now met her sad and alone, like the widowed heron on the river banks. Hence, they call the spot of the Mosejana, or of the Forsaken. One day, when the beautiful daughter of Araquen was lamenting on the brink of the Mosejana lake, a strident voice from the top of a Carnauba cried out her name, Iracema! Iracema! Raising her eyes, she saw amongst the palm fronds 
her beautiful Jandaya, flapping its wings and ruffling its feathers with the joy of seeing her. The remembrance of her country, extinguished by love, burned again in her thoughts. She saw the beautiful plains of the Ipu, the sides of the mountain range where she was born, and the wigwam of Araquem, and she felt saudades. But even at this moment she did not repent of having abandoned them. Her voice gushed forth in song. The jandaya opened its wings, fluttered around, and settled on her shoulder. It stretched its neck and rubbed itself against her throat. It smoothed her hair with its black beak and pecked her small red lips as if it mistook them for a pitanga. Iracema remembered how ungrateful she had been to the jandaya, forgetting it at the time of her happiness, and now it came to console her in her sorrow. This evening she did not return alone to the cabin, and all next day her agile fingers wove a beautiful cage of straw, which she lined with the soft wool of the manguba, to receive her companion and friend. On the following dawn, the voice of the jandaya awoke her. The beautiful bird left its mistress no more, either because it could never weary of seeing her after so long an absence, or because instinct told it that she needed a companion in her sad solitude. End of chapter 26